Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Journaling with Movement Part 3. In this part, we're going to explore creating diagonal movement across our pages in our art journal. Again, I am still using the moleskin planner diary thing that I found at Goodwill uh, last year, and I am loving working in it. I love the texture and printing in the background. We're not trying to cover up the whole entire page. We're trying to work with what is already there to create an interesting composition. This is about leaving the blank or negative space and just adding to it rather than trying to cover it up. So here I have a homemade stencil. Um, literally, this is made out of a piece of junk mail um, with and different round paper punches that I had. I am using some turquoise uh, Dina Wakely media paint and I am just lightly stenciling on these large circles in a diagonal manner across the page from the lower left hand corner to the upper right hand corner. I am interested in using organic round shapes for this and layering different fun interesting colors. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, here I am using another blue from Dina Wakely's paint called Ocean. This particular bubble stencil, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is a Mike Deacon stencil. So again, I will link his um, website in the description below where you can um, take a look at the stencils he has available uh, and that he makes. Um, they're not always in stock, but um, when they are, I try to snap up the interesting ones. So I'm just like line trying to line up like one of the bubbles as I move up the page. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want that movement on the page. I already am loving the way that looks and it's just like basically two colors of blue. But it really does make the eye travel up from the one lower corner to the upper corner across the page and it, without doing anything, you're incorporating the background into the composition, I think. And this is again, as I've said in the other two videos, my favorite way to journal. This is a neon orange from Daravan. Um, I was sent a little tiny bit of it um, to try uh, from my dear friend Cindy Utter and um, at first I grabbed the red and I realized the red's probably not what I wanted. I wanted just a little pop with this other round organic-y shape. This stencil might be from eye stencils, I don't remember. Um, anyway, um, so I grab a little bit of that paint on the same brush. I'm not bothering to clean my brushes. And I am just lightly stenciling these round organic, organic e style of shapes. I think it's this is a seamed sea themed set of stencils. I think because there's more than one than this in the set, and this is just one of them. I don't use all of them. I think I only use this one. It's just something I have in my stash. You use what you have. Don't go feel like you have to go out and buy. Um, something just because I'm using it. Use what you have to create an interesting composition in your journal. I'm using this video as your inspiration point, your jumping off point. Um, in this particular instance, I use almost all paint. That is not always the case. Sometimes I create these pages and they have no paint on them. In this case, there's a lot of paint. I do end up adding a couple bits of collage, but here I'm using my color wheel to try to sort of figure out what other color I want to use because I know I need one more color. And so I'm looking at my color wheel and I'm thinking, hmm, okay. And I'm looking at what colors I have and what ones I think I want to use. And then I go and grab the Dina Wakely Lime colored paint, lime green. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, okay, which one do I want to use? Which one do I want to use? And I'm like, I'm going to use the lime. My first instinct is to use the lime. I'm going to try to listen to that. Uh, my, you know, muse does talk to me in my head. I know I shouldn't say that out loud. It makes me sound insane. But anyway, um, and she does tell me, stop. And then when I don't listen, I regret not listening. And she also tr tells me which colors to use. Again, when I don't listen, I regret it. So I'm going to listen. I have this little other tiny organically shaped stencil. Again, again, I think these are from eye stencils. And I am going to put some of this, um, these shapes on there um, with green. And I have very little paint on the brush and I'm very lightly scrubbing through the stencil 
in a circular pattern to get the shapes on there. While I don't care if they're not perfect, I don't want too much paint on there and to it to be blotchy or blobby. I want to be able to see the suggestion, at least, of the shapes across the page. This is about a more perfect rather than imperfect stencil job. And that, I love the way that looks. And I could have just stopped there and been perfectly happy. I did decide, as always, that my page needed words. I always think my page needs words. For me, that is just something about art journaling. I have to have words on my page. Some of you may not feel that way, but for me, it just doesn't seem like it's complete without it. So again, I'm getting out my multi-pen um, that's just full of different colors of ballpoint ink, nothing fancy. Um, and I am looking to see if there's a color that I like and there wasn't. And so then I looked to see um, if I had a Bic pen that was in a color that I liked. Um, this is my just little box of like everyday pens that I grab. I have a lot of pens, but these are the ones I use most of the time. And then I'm still not happy, so I'm looking. I find a gold pen in there that I think I might want to use. It's a gold uh, Uniball Signo pen. And then I look for, there they are. Then I'm like, wait, I have these Papermate pens. These are Papermate flare pens. They're nothing fancy. You can get them at any uh, art supply store. Um, Target has them. A lot of your big box stores, any place that carries Papermate pens probably has these. They come in different colors. And I want a blue one. So I'm looking for which color of blue because there's a number of different colors of blue. And I am working on a giant pad of drawing paper. So I'm using it to sort of test the pens off camera and try to pick the ones that I, um, or one that I think will work. And I find one that's more green rather than blue because the page is really green. And so now I'm just tracing out and adding some marks to some of those big circle-y shapes I put on there initially. And I'm just, you know, again, nothing perfect, nothing fancy, just tracing around the circle, adding a little swirly f flourish, and that's it. You don't have to be good at drawing to do this. I am tracing the ones that I think I need to to um, continue with the movement up across the page diagonally um, to um, encourage the eye to travel up from one side to the other or down from the top side to the lower. So I'm looking at the different shapes that are on there. I always want to do something right in the middle on the fold. Again, there I am again. What is with that? So then I keep like trying to put the pen away and thinking, oh, that's good. No, wait, here's another one. <laughs> and then of course I have to add some little doodly hash marks to the some of the spaces between the doodle lines. Uh, that's one of my things and if you are a fan of my rubber stamp line you know that because it is in a lot of the rubber stamp designs and I just spend a little bit of time adding marks even in places where on camera you can't see them believe me they're there So whatever your instincts tell you to do, do that. Don't worry again about covering up the background because it's not about that. It's not about taking a lot of time with it. It's not about agonizing over this or that. These videos, including this one, are filmed in real time. So each one of these videos is about 20 minutes-ish. That's real time. That's how long it took me to create the pages. Um, Sometimes when I do this, they turn out and I like them. In this case, thankfully, because I was filming, I like all three of them. That doesn't always happen, uh, but it does happen more often than not. It's more about practicing and experimenting than it is, uh, and playing, than it is about being worried about creating a perfect page or one that I love. Sometimes the ones that I don't like are the ones I've learned the most from. Usually that's the case. So anyway, now I'm just adding some gold dots with the gold Uniball Signo pen. I love that pen. It always works. It never is clogged. <laughs> I love that pen. I have such a problem with clogged pens, clogged gel pens in particular. 
So off to the left side, you see this piece of note paper here that I got in happy mail from somebody and I honestly don't remember who. Um, it says Ed Hardy at the bottom, which is a restaurant, I think. Anyway, it has these two little fish on it. And I keep looking at it thinking, I really want to use those fish on here. And of course, I want to find a quote or words to use on here, which I do eventually. But I'm looking at the fish and I'm not sure what I want to do. I end up using the fish on this page and I end up not throwing the rest of the piece of paper away and using it on a different page in a different journal. I didn't film that one, but you can see those gold dots while there. It's a simple thing with just random dots. It really did add a lot to the page, I think and the movement on the page. I like this because it's like the shapes are dancing around in a diagonal matter, but up and down that imaginary diagonal line and like they're dancing uh, up and down the line. I, I love the way that looks. So here we're gonna tear out these fish from the background paper. And I don't want too many of the straight edges, so I end up um, being careful not to rip the fish by putting my finger there to guard against the image being ripped um, to rip out the edge of the image so that it is at least mostly torn and not straight so it's more of an organic shape. So in placement of these images if you're going to do this especially when you have a page where you really already love the movement on the page, make sure that when you put them on, they don't conflict with that movement and that they just enhance it or work with it. And you'll see me sort of play with that a little bit. Where I'm like, I know I want this on there. I know it should be on there, but where exactly should it be? Yep, there it goes. So we're gonna glue those down and we are going to get them on there. I do decide to add some writing. This is a piece of old book text. This is from an address book of my grandmother's and um, that is her handwriting on there. And I decide I want a little bit of that texture on the page, um, that writing of hers on the page. And there's my quote. I always dry fit my pieces before I glue anything down to make sure that I really am okay with the placement of them, that I like them, and that I'm okay with it. I really kind of, I know I want these on here, but I'm struggling a bit with where they should be and where the placement of everything should be. So you see me, this is why I dry fit things. And then I realized that maybe that other piece is just way too big. And then I think, hmm, yep, I think that, I think, I think that was the case. It was just too big. It was covering up too much. You lost the diagonal dancing across the page and I wasn't okay with that. It was covering it rather than enhancing it. So now that I know for sure where they should be, I'm gonna use some fluid matte medium and I am going to glue the pieces down. You can see there that the gel pen wasn't dry. And of course, I stuck my finger in it because, you know, that's what I do. So I pull my pieces off to the side and I grab my white paint, my little Gladware container of white paint. Uh, I've said it in previous videos. It's just different kinds of white paint where the tubes or bottles were mostly empty. I scraped them out and put them in this little Gladware container and whenever I have one that's any kind of a white shade, whether it's titanium white or buff or anything, I scrape them out and stick them in here. And I use this white mixture in my journals. So I am going to try to not cover up the smear, um, but I'm going to um, 
add over the top of it some white dots from Mike Deacon stencil. It doesn't cover it up. Um, and I don't expect it to. Um, but it will disguise it and push it into the background a little bit. And that's okay. And then you can't just do that in one place. So if you're going to do that, you need to do it in other places. And you need I needed to be mindful of, again, my diagonal movement, my dancing across the page, um, sort of feeling I had from this page while I was doing this. If you like these kind of videos and you'd like to see more of them, please let me know. Don't be afraid to ask any questions. Leave something in the comments below. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you will. I will try to leave relevant uh, links to everything I've mentioned in the description if I can. If I've forgotten something, please ask. All of my social media links, my Etsy shop, and my YouTube channel. If you want to support the free content here on YouTube, all the links for how to do that and everything are in the description below. There's a link to a site called Linktree in the description below. If you click on it, you're going to find every single place I am on the internet. So, that being said, let's finish our page. And I love that stencil of Mike Deacon's, by the way. It's really nice. <laughs> and I'm not saying that because he sent it to me for free. I bought that stencil. <laughs> so now I want to put my pieces back on there. But now I'm like, okay, wait. Now the paint is wet. So I don't want to smear anything else. I've already, you know, goofed up one corner. So I'm using my glue stick. Love my glue stick. And I'm going to push everything, glue everything down with a glue stick, including the old pieces of paper from my grandmother, the little fish... And I think the little fish paper was probably white or something and was like sprayed with spray inks or something. It looks like it. Anyway, I don't know what that paper is from, but it was really cool. If you gave it to me, if you're the one that gave it to me, thank you. So before I put the quote on, I'm going to get the big elements on. And... Make sure they're positioned where I want them to be. And then add the quote. I cut out quotes from all kinds of magazines and newspapers and junk mail and, and all sorts of things. I love to add words to my page. I'm going to use an old gift card to push things down and make sure that everything's pushed down and well attached to the page. Of course, trying not to smear the paint which I do a little bit, and I don't know if you caught it on camera. If you did, you can leave a comment below and tell me where. All right, that's it. I want you to play this week with movement in your art journals. This week, play with diagonal movement, and let's see what you come up with. If you want to share, you can join my Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. And I have another group that I teach in. I teach with a few other teachers. If you want to join that one, you can. Um, the links for all of them are, are again, they're over at Linktree. And um, don't be afraid to play in your journals. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make a mess. Um, it's part of the process and you should just go with it. Um, here I decided because of the smear, I would just go ahead and just add some more paint. So I did. And it did work the pieces of paper into the background, which so it did it, it did two things. Anyway, the most important thing here is to go out and have a great day, have some fun, explore your art, play with movement in your journals, and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.